Cheers, Stevie. Cheers. Merry Thank Christmas. Very much. Oh! You did tell me this was for Christmas, so I forgot I did put a Christmas jumper on for you. So Especially I. for you, yeah. I, I, I did think it'd be wrong of me to come not in a Christmas jumper, and I thought I'd put one on that you'd really like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so as, as a how, what do you think of that? England fan, yeah, I'd be a big, big fan of that. Yeah, do you wear that a lot? I've worn it once. <laughs> Is it for football? No, no, no. I was debating, like, can I wear this to a pub? I am now. But we've got, we've got a big game on Saturday against France. Do I wear this to the pub? I think you'd be fine, mate. Probably. I, I like it, but I'm not sure if I like it just saying I believe everywhere. It makes it sound... It sounds very religious, but also football. Do you know what I mean? It sounds a bit like you're... Football Which is, is the spirit of Christmas, I suppose. Yeah, football is religion to many. Yeah. <laughs> very deep, very deep. What, what are your plans for Christmas? Um, I actually don't have any at the moment. We want to stay home, me, Ariane and Isaac, for Christmas Day. Um, I think I'm just going to, she'll cook. I was about to say I'm going to make her cook. <laughs> Ariane will cook. Um, but I think we're going to go to my dad's maybe, on Boxing nice. Day. Is he in Norwich as well? Lower Stoft. Oh, the Thinking Man's Norwich. The Seaside Norwich. <laughs> Not too keen on the place. Better than Yarmouth. It's got a better um, theme park than Yarmouth. What's that? Oh, Pleasure of Hills. Yeah. That's Lower South Way, yeah. Yeah, much better. Well, I would have said no, but now, this winter, Yarmouth's getting rid of the dog flume. That's like the oldest one there, isn't it? Apparently too, too expensive to run. And I went there recently. Not that I'm going to brag about it, but I went there recently and you can no longer go in and pay as you go, I don't think. You had to get a wristband to go no, but in. it's good value, the, the Yarmouth one. It's not that expensive, it's like 15 quid or something for it. Is there much in there though? There's loads. Oh, uh, well, maybe I need to go back. I'd go back. Well, there was the log flu. Now I'm thinking well, maybe I'm going to have to consider Pleasure Hills over that. Yeah, I'd, I'd go Pleasure Hills, but they got rid of one of my favourite rides. They had a ride Which called one? the Fireball, I think. It's one of those that spins like that and goes up like a pirate ship that spins oh, wow. as it goes. It's gone. Oh, sorry to hear that, mate. <laughs> yeah. It did hurt. Honestly, I was there. I've never been so angry. Cost the same to get in well, and never. I've got rid of the best ride. Never been so angry. I've had some bad things happen <laughs> in life. <laughs> it feels like there might be a situation where you would that, be... That's top of the list. Where you would be more angry. So Christmas Day, so did, have you had Christmases alone before? Do you normally have family around or what do you do as in the three of you? So I spent one Christmas Day alone, ever. Like, alone, alone. Oh, wow. What's yeah. that like? I was in Bristol and at the opticians we used to have a thing where unless you really early booked it off, you tend to either work Boxing Day or Christmas Eve, because we'd stay open for both. Cause Why are people getting in for Boxing Day? Got eyes. Oh, they get drunk on Christmas and smash their glasses. So they come in on oh. Boxing You actually get a few people with broken glasses on Boxing Day, but because I lived in Bristol and all my family were in Norwich, one year there were a few people who were like struggling to be able to plan things for their family. Yeah. And I was like, well, if I work one of them, I can't go home anyway, yeah. so I'll just work both. So I just worked both for people, so they could do their Christmas That's stuff. That's a kind Christmas thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. Very festive. On Christmas Day I ordered a kebab. The kebab shops open on Christmas yeah, Day? Yeah, they, they don't celebrate Christmas, so he bought a kebab to me, and I've, honestly I've never been looked at in such like a, I'm, I feel so sorry for you way. Like he looked at me just like, there you go mate. He's just, he's, just, he's just sad Christmas day. Kebab. I was alright, I played FIFA and had a kebab as an all right Christmas. FaceTimed my family. That's right, yeah. But other than that, kind of got to enjoy life on my own. For a lot of people, Christmas is a time of excess drinking, eating, and all that sort of stuff. But quite often, you find you're lacking in nutrition, vegetables, and just decent food. But that doesn't have to be the case, thanks to HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you can get everything you need to make delicious and healthy meals sent to your house and step-by-step -step instructions on how to make them. You get to choose what you're getting every time you order and I've gone vegetable heavy in this time to try and counteract the other stuff that goes on around this type of year. Roasted aubergine and chickpea curry, crispy cauliflower nuggets, but I'm cooking this. Baharat roasted veg and aubergine with zug, bulgur and yogurt tahini dressing. Looks delicious, even if I don't know what about 50% of the words mean. One of the things I like, in addition to the ability to get vegetables and healthy stuff inside me and the kids, is the time it saves and the speed. There's no going to the supermarket, there's no faffing around trying to check if you've got your tahini for this tahini yoghurt. You just have everything in one place and it's useful this time of year because I run my own business. I find a lot of people have left things at the last minute and then suddenly it's, hey Robbie, can you do this? So I don't have a lot of time. And this means I can still get nice food and my little pub trips. That 
is excellent. And to be fair, every meal I've had from HelloFresh, I've thoroughly enjoyed. If you want to give it a go yourself, then click on the link down in the description. You can get 60% off your first box and, sorry, 25% off the next eight boxes? That must be a mistake. It's not. What a deal. Use the code down in the description. Get yourself some food. Cheers, HelloFresh. I'm going to go eat my lunch. I've never had a alone Christmas. I've been in Canada for Christmas and I lived out there and we didn't have um, we didn't have turkey or anything. So the closest I could find, I ordered a pizza that had chicken on it. Was it nice? Yeah, it was like a pizza. I'm not the biggest roast dinner fan. Are you not? Or Christmas dinner. I like it, but like it, it's never my go-to. Like I, I couldn't tell you the last time I had a Sunday roast. I could tell you when I asked one. You two Sundays ago. <laughs> well, I thought you did one with Alfie. Oh yeah, that was that. that was in the morning. It was just sampling. It wasn't a full. We didn't oh, have a full okay. meal, meal sort of thing. Yeah, but I do. I do. Sunday roast. My kids don't really like Sunday roast. They're a bit, they're a bit like, oh, you're doing another sun home cooked Sunday roast. I'm going, you knew. It's an older food, isn't it? I think I do like it, and I like most of the elements of it. I just think a lot of it is fairly bland. So, what would you have on? What would you have for your Christmas dinner this year? Turkey is the go-to, I think, which is probably the blandest of choices, but it's the go-to, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm a big parsnip fan. Oh yeah, so is Alfie. I love parsnips. I think Alfie's all over parsnips. Yeah, I am. Honey roasted as well. Honey roasted parsnips. How do you do that? Just put honey on it when you roast it? Buy a Aunt Bessie's. <laughs> They'll do it for you. Fine. Um, I like a roast potato, but again, fussy. You need roast potatoes crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside. Yep. From Aunt Bessie? Probably. <laughs> Then it's so easy to do, you don't need... <laughs> this is why I don't like roast dinners that much. Yeah, this is the problem. I, I'm great at roast dinners. Do you want me to tell you through it? Go on. So you just get King Edward. You can, is that a type of potato? It's a type of potato. Okay, okay. cool. If some people say marriage paper, they're wrong. Yeah, uh, King Edward, right. And then you parboil them. Well, that's yeah. what they say, parboil. Probably about seven minutes of boiling water. Yeah. Is this... Like, so you peel them. Just peel them, don't cut them up. Okay. You cut them in the shape size you want. But okay. what I would say, cut them slightly larger. Yeah and then go slightly beyond parboil as far as you can take it without these potatoes Before breaking they start up. to mash. Because what you want, the more, at the end of it, you're going to drain it, then shake up your potatoes. Oh, and you don't want them to fully And the more apart. you want to go as close to the bone as you can without these potatoes going apart. And then you've got your oil or duck or goose fat if you're catering for non-vegetarians. In the, yeah, get it really hot, and then when you add it, that, that'll get it really crispy on the outside, you get a lovely soft in it. What I'm going to do this year, I'll, I'll let Ariane cook the meal, yeah. but I'm, I'm going to take control of the potatoes. Okay. I'm going to do them exactly like that, and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, if you, I, I will keep my phone on Christmas Day. I, I took control of one thing last year, I made homemade stuffing. Which one was that? Oh, it's incredible. Was it so good? much better than just Aunt Bessie's stuffing. I made homemade stuffing once, it wasn't very really successful. Oh, I loved it, yeah. Oh, get nice. some sausage meat. Oh, you some... see, I was doing like veggie. Oh, I did, I did yeah. proper one. Yeah. That sounds great. Oh, it's good. You do that, I'll do your potatoes. Okay. Deal. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right, no, that's, that sounds excellent. And, what, and do, do you do it? Do you go out on Christmas Day? Do you do anything? Do you do a walk? Some people do a walk, don't they? On Christmas, I feel a bit like. I remember one Christmas a few years back I went to a pub on Christmas Day and I just feel a little bit rude. Like I feel like I'm forcing these people to work on Christmas Day so I find that a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, but you're not in the same way that we weren't forcing the people here to work when we ordered this pint. I know, but Christmas Day is different, isn't it? Yeah, but whether or not you turn up isn't going to affect yeah, but that's because of the people who want to turn up on Christmas Day. But then at the same time, there's people who don't get to spend any... Like, I would have liked yeah. to have gone to a pub on that one I spent alone. Yeah. I remember last Christmas, I streamed on Christmas Day and loads of people came in and watched oh, nice. because like, there's a lot of people who were saying they might have had COVID so they couldn't yeah. go anywhere or they just couldn't see family for reasons like work and stuff yeah. or they just don't have family to spend it with. Yeah, so, it can be a hard time for some people, I think. I think I'll probably stream again at some point on Christmas this, okay. this year. I think I'm going to try and I'm trying to work into some traditions. We didn't really have many traditions growing up as a family. What we'd do is every Christmas day we'd go across to Mr. and Mrs. Hutley, our neighbours, our yeah. neighbours, um, dead now, lovely people. Um, <laughs> Don't know what I'm laughing. <laughs> sick. Um, Sorry. Uh, yeah, and, and we'd go over there and Mr. Hutley would make his Christmas drink. Now, I remember this is this drink that was legendary when I was a kid and before I could drink it, it was like an alcoholic thing. It's, champagne was the mixer, 
in it. And it had all sorts of weird ingredients I've never seen before or since. Green chartreuse, and all these things in it. And I would love to find out the recipe for it. Um, and he made this drink and all the adults would like moan about it because it was apparently this like lethally strong drink that you're drinking in the morning on Christmas Day. And, um, so, and to the point that like my mum would like tell us to lie and say like we're going to say that later on we're going to drive somewhere so I can't have the drink. Like, wow okay, I thought lying was wrong. <laughs> in this case it's fine. So then when I got older, I became older and I got off to uni and was drinking and stuff and came back, I remember one year saying from Stanley saying about that Christmas drink he used to make, and his eyes lit up. He was a young man. He was like, <laughs> "I'll do it next year." And now all the other adults were like, "What have you clench, done, that? Fist, <laughs> you know, that the, um, Did it not taste yeah. nice? It tastes amazing. It didn't taste alcoholic. Got hammered. Oh, uh, okay. You did like three glasses of this. You'd be all over the shop. It was brilliant, though. We created a drink like that whilst I was at uni. We, we, I used to live on a road called Toronto Road. Canada based um, and we made this Toronto drink which was like a full bottle of Disserano, full bottle of vodka, there was some WKD in there, some VK in there, then some co Coca-Cola in there is like and it tasted like juice, you wouldn't know and after one glass of it you're drunk. Different ingredient choices than Mr. Happy's Christmas drink. Yeah, his sounds potentially nicer. It was nice, yeah, it was. I'm gonna think I'm I'm gonna find get in touch with one of his daughters and try and see if they've got the recipe. Get it. If you can get it, we'll drink it on happy hour. Yeah. Oh, I'd be so okay. Oh, this so is our new all putty. Right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not far off putty season, you know. Putty's January. Oh, yeah. I didn't come last time. No, it was just me and Alfie. And I'll, I'll try and make sure I can make the drink. I'll let you know when it happens this, this time. Yeah, no, so that's, that's, yeah, exciting stuff. Hopefully it's not February because we'll be, we could be away. It's not end of January. Okay, perfect. Oh, so, oh. We're, we're away oh, February oh. 1st. Yeah, maybe a couple of days as well. You mentioned that we're going away, Stevie. We're off on tour, aren't we, for Happy Hour? Going on tour. Happy Hour Live, the Round Sheep Tour. It's gone well, hasn't it? Yeah, really well. We're doing, now we're doing, 14 venues yep. over 17 days, finishing right. in Norwich. Sold out. Beautiful city of Norwich. I bumped into a guy outside. He came up and said, I'm going to see your show. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't tell you. The other day we were in The Murderers um, watching England and a guy came up to me at the bar and was like, oh, buzzing for the tour, can't wait to see it. And I went, oh, where are you coming? He said to Norwich. I don't know why I asked. We were in Norwich. And he, he said, oh, come to the Norwich show. And I went, oh, it's going to be great. It's sold out. It's a big venue. And he just went, oh, I'm not coming to the show. <laughs> he didn't have a ticket. No. Oh, he's going to go to Cambridge then. Yeah, well, yeah. Anyone yeah. in Norwich, go to Cambridge. Yeah, I said that. Are you, are you nervous? Not at the moment. I think, I think I'm confident enough. Obviously, we did a show in front of 100 people, which is a whole different scale to what we're doing. But I think I'm confident enough in us that we're just comfortable enough to be able to just speak and hopefully make things funny. I think it'll be good. Yeah, I'm not, I will be beforehand, I think. Yeah, I th it'll take a few shows to be like, OK, this is, yeah. this is perfect. So sorry to the people of Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's already, that's already sold out, so we don't have to worry about that. sold out, so in trouble. People of Reading. <laughs> We'll still be a little bit, <laughs> a little bit ready. Getting refunds. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be quite fun. And I, I, it's, it's, it's such a mystery to what goes, what you have to do on the day of a show. Like I don't know what, what you do for sound check or things like that. Yeah, or, I don't, I don't think. When I look at it, my brain's just going, oh, it's fine, we go to a city, we travel two, four hours, whatever it is, to get to the next city, and then we do a show. But it's not going to be that, it's going to be 14 days of graft. Yeah. So Jack's going to struggle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he really is. He really is. Oh, it's going to be fun, though. And then can you imagine the end, the, at moment, the end of Norwich, where we finally finish? That would be, oh, be glorious. That's got to be a big party after that as well. We yeah. have to do something big. Yeah. This is the golden place for yeah. it. Tell Phil to kick everyone out for it for the night. <laughs> no one's allowed in no unless, no unless one's they're on our in. list. No one is allowed in. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't, as I said, I don't feel nervous, but I know I will be at some point. Yeah, I think it's hard to feel nervous at the moment because it's so far away. It's not even that far away. Because you imagine if it, went, if it was, if it went, 
dreadfully. Like imagine the first night. If like start, everyone's sort of cheering, you come on like five minutes, within five minutes everyone's booing and stuff and oh, people are just walking so out. So uncomfortable. And then but it's like that every night and you know you have to go out <laughs> and there's nothing we can do about it. You just it. know it's gonna happen again. You just yeah. go out going, just leave, just leave it now. <laughs> We're already crying as we go on stage. <laughs> Don't you know, make us do it. You know what's coming. <laughs> oh, I always want that to happen now. Just one show. <laughs> No, all of them. No, I want, I want the relentless misery. The people listening to this, if you're coming to the live show, plan something on the Reddit, get together yeah. and just boo us. Fiona's coming to film behind the scenes, that'd be so bad when we're crying out of a go stage. <laughs> that would be the best documentary ever of a disastrous tour. Maybe we could do it on purpose. <laughs> Let's just well, I think that spoils the... Why don't we get Jack to it. say things that he'd naturally say but Katie can normally cut? Yeah. They could just say that on stage. Yeah, I know that. Back He'll get cancelled, we'll be okay. Yeah. But then his name's on the show, so we're, we're also ruined yeah. for it. I like a pub at Christmas, Stevie. Murder yeah. is a good Christmassy pub. It's really good. Decorations. It has a good atmosphere. Like, even, even it's only due, it's, what time is it at the moment? It's only one o'clock, but it's still got a nice little atmosphere going now. I always like the fairy lights. They Big are. fan of fairy lights. But I have really only spent time in here lately during the World Cup, and it's a whole different atmosphere. I will say, I love the murderers. You know, I love the murderers. Yeah, the murderers a long time. I have no interest in the murderers during the game. It's it's an intense. It's, it's not the place, obviously. It's certain people do make it uncomfortable. There was a vile, vile man in here for the Wales game. <laughs> oh, again, and he's young as well, he's probably like my age. Young. Yeah, yeah. He was like 28, 29, and just the stuff he was saying was like, disgusting, and like, he was seething as he said it, like he'd be calling, like calling them sheep shaggers and stuff, but it'd be, you could hear the spit coming out of his mouth as he said it, and, was, and then at one point, he called um, Declan Rice the C word, went, went full blown, at our own player, but it was John Stones who misplaced the pass. It's like, you've just lost it, mate. You're Poor so Declan. angry. The second half, completely different story. Lovely guy. It's weird, isn't it? Some people are so weird. Like, I look at the footage of, like, Box Park and all these sort of things, everyone's just throwing their beers in there. I don't get it. Yeah, I saw um, Stuart Jones posted about this, and a few people replied to him, going, oh, you're such a boomer. I'm 29. I'm, I can be classed as a boomer for that kind of thought. Yeah. But, I've been to Box Park, you're looking at seven, eight, nine pound pints, potentially yeah. more during a football game. I don't know if they up the prices then. I'm not loving it. <laughs> I'm keeping it. hold of my drink. Also, I get that in that little moment, it's like, hey, that like fun. You just gotta sit, you gotta go in the tube, I'm all wet and stinking of beer. Is that the football fans' version of taking your shirt off for a celebration? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, you get but a few I people doing that. Yeah, but I would question whether restoring a third goal against Senegal is worthy of Lobby taking a shirt off and getting a booking, or in this case, having a black oh, yeah. t-shirt. So yeah. Yeah, it's not for me. I, I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd nurse my pint as I go and yeah. just enjoy the game. I always used to go when I was a young man, and people go out to loud bars. I'd always go along. I hated it. Yeah. I always did. I, there was never a time I enjoyed going out. You still do it. I don't know why. I don't think any of my friends particularly enjoyed it. It was just a thing you went to before we, you go to a club or something. We went to something recently together. Yeah. That all that we was did was go, loud. this is too loud. Yeah. And I don't know if I was just feeling really old. No, it was too loud. We were quite fortunate that the group of people we were with were also going, yeah, this is too loud. But people can, people will say, oh, Oh, now you don't want to. No, I didn't. When I was 18, I didn't want to be somewhere too loud. You want to be able to hear the people you're with. Yes. Like, there's a level of loudness. Even if you're dancing, you still want to be able to convey something to someone if needed, rather than just going, yeah. what? What? Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah. yeah, I constantly feel like that, that meme of the guy trying to talk in the girl's ear, but like just talking to you. Yeah. Would you come please listen to me. <laughs> I love that photo. It's the Harry Maguire one as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leaning over, talking to her. I, um, I thought before, I reckon for about a year, when memes became a thing, I'd never heard the word said, and I thought it was pronounced meme. Yeah, I, I've heard people say meme as well. Meme, yeah, I could believe that. But, yeah, memes, I've, I'm, I am a bit of a boomer with memes, because I still think the old ones are the big ones. So, like, I don't really know what the current memes are. Like, I'll um, still use the Hey Arthur Fist. Yeah, yeah I'm, use, I'm, I'm just constantly just using Drake, looking away. Yeah, Homer yeah. going into the bush. Yeah, those are the only ones I've got in my locker. 
Yeah. 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 I thought he was going to come in. No, he's not interested. No, he's he not doesn't care. He did ask before, didn't he, to come in? Yeah. So you're not going to come watch the England France game on Saturday then? <laughs> no, I don't think so, mate. No. I if will... it was Scotland, what would you do? I, do you know what? I think I watched Scotland's last World Cup game in 1998 in here. I think. Oh, really? I think so. <laughs> that is mad. Um, against Morocco, we lost 3 0. It was the most drunk I've ever been after the tournament. Because once wow. the goals, because we were living with a chance again for him, once the goals started coming, I was just like. Knocking back pints. I was wearing my kilt oh. and I remember having to be rescued just lying on the street on Unthank Road. Oh wow, big and, and, and a loss. I've, oh, nice. I've been talking to friends about this Saturday thinking, do we go out afterwards? And then a few of them are going, yeah, if we win. But then I'm like, but we're already drinking. And they, you I, I, hope you lose? I think they just, they're going to be miserable and just want to go out. I, I went out after the England USA game and had a good yeah. night. And that was a boring game. Yeah, I don't think it matters. You can just drink. You can drink away your sorrows. You can just. Yeah, you drink if there wasn't football on. So what's the difference? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm team go out. Uh, yeah, I think you're in the right. Maybe not dead on Unfang Road at the end of the night, but I'm definitely team go out. Don't make rules. <laughs> Have you enjoyed this World Cup? Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the the surprise teams. I'm sad Japan got knocked out. Yeah. Especially to Croatia. I've got a little bit of a hatred towards Croatia. Obviously, four years ago. <laughs> All right, <laughs> the, the team, team the team, not the place. I've been to the place, and it, yeah, it was when me and Jack went for Dinamo Zagreb. Oh, so you went to Zagreb. Went to Zagreb. I've yeah, been there for a day. I went. I went just went for a week to Croatia recently. Loved it. Yeah, you went to a sunnier part, didn't you? I went to Dubrovnik. No, just outside Dubrovnik. Yeah, yeah. yours. Uh, it wasn't the best weather when we went. No, but it was nice, and ev everyone seemed nice. Croatia's really nice. nice. I really like Croatia. We actually had a Croatian girl come up to us before the game, um, saying that she loved happy hour, which was cool. No, no yeah, way. bad. What, who lives bad. in Croatia? Yeah, Croatian girls who came over as, as we were walking towards the stadium. We've, we've got mad. listeners all over the gaff. The Queen's gaff. Uh, <laughs> No, that's, that's, that's weird. Yeah. I find it weird for people. I think a lot of people listen to us in Australia or New Zealand. When I had yeah. to write those postcards, a lot of people were in New Australia and New Zealand. I think it's a sense of humour, isn't it? The British humour and the Australian humour are very similar. Yeah. I like Australians a lot. I always thought this. I feel like there's a butt coming. I've been to Australia as well. Okay. I think Australians are, you can divide into two camps. Yeah. Australians who travel the world who are amazing. Yeah. Australians who don't go anywhere, less amazing. But if you meet an Australian outside of Australia, they're almost always amazing. Yeah. Go in Australia, much more of a roll of the dice. Oh, really? Yeah. I feel like that could be the same with Americans. A lot of them, yeah. there's a lot who don't even own passports. They don't go anywhere. Yeah, I sort of. I get that bit more because why I get why Americans often don't own passports because there's everything in America. Yeah, like if I want to go skiing, I, have, I, I go to Scotland. But generally, I've got to go abroad. So if I want to go somewhere sunny, I've got to go abroad. Yeah, they're not very limited. They've got are everything, they? really. Yeah, I suppose it makes sense. Vegas was a weird story for us. We had a few people in Vegas come over and speak as well. I can't believe what well, British people though. No, a couple of Americans. One American, West Ham fan. No idea, no yeah. idea why, but he spoke to Jack for about an hour, just about West Ham. Oh, nice. Just this random American fella, I don't know how he's picked West Ham over there, but not no offence to West Ham, but it's a very odd team for an American person to choose to support. Yeah, I like that, I like when you, um, I like when people randomly get odd sort of football teams. I remember seeing, um, I remember seeing a photo of someone so when you'd gone out to Africa and while they were there they were in some village and they'd been there was a basically in this village there were loads of kitchens in random football shops because apparently they'd been given there was some kind of clothes donation thing yeah. and it had gone to this place there were two loads of football there. so like there be like little African kids like Sheffield Wednesday shirts walking around <laughs> and stuff like that they would say that's amazing I wonder if they actually then go you know what this is my yeah, team yeah I think it worked they were going yeah Sheffield Wednesday like, okay Cool. Yeah, I've met a few people in my time who never cared for football, like at uni and stuff. You'd meet people who go, oh, I don't really care for football. Who should I support? <laughs> it's like, yeah. like how, do, how do you just pick a team? Yeah, it'd be weird picking a team as an adult. Because when you were a kid, like, I support a group of Kentucky to support Liverpool. But I didn't really know where Liverpool was or anything about it because you're, really, you're not in full possession of the facts. Yeah, well, I was exactly the same. I'm Man United yeah. because my mum fancied David Beckham. 
Like, I've got no real good reason. And I'm, I'm okay with that, though. Like, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. I've only ever supported them. I haven't gone on and gone, oh, actually, I've, I might... Sorry, how did the chat go? Yeah, I just want to see... And the other one goes, I want to bank David Beckham, so... Spot no, him. no, it was just that that would be the only team she'd watch. So I ah. obviously started watching that. But my dad supports Liverpool. Yeah. All right. And he's from Bromley, so but he loves West Ham yeah. as well. My dad does, so I've always had like this little love for West Ham, which is obviously lucky because I've now worked with them a little <laughs> yeah, bit yeah, thanks yeah. to Jack. So yeah. not that their fans like that, but yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I've started taking my kids to Norwich now. I like that you've done that because it's convenient. Yeah, I don't want to, have to drive miles away to go to some other <laughs> team. I think Norwich are a really, really good team as well to be able to feel all emotions. Like there's a lot yeah. of teams that like, you get like, oh, we're really good, we can win everything, and your only other emotion yeah. is, oh, we just didn't win that. But with yeah. Norwich, you can win the championship and then you can get relegated. You can feel that both ends yeah. are perfection, essentially. Yeah, and you wouldn't, and it's not beyond the realms of possibility they could go <laughs> up and eventually stay for a while. Work the way yeah. I mean, it's not that it's in my lifetime that they've been playing European football, Norwich, you know what I mean? So it's, it's it's possibly gone the other way now, but um, yeah, no, it's quite nice. What makes a good Christmassy pub? A Christmassy pub. I've started to hear the music more recently. I hadn't hadn't heard too much Christmas music recently, but I think there were a few on when we came in today. I think. Um, I think it's the atmosphere. I think it's the people that make it good more than the pub itself. I'm not yeah. the biggest pub goer. This is the only pub I ever go to. Is it? Yeah, I'm not really a pub goer. Why? Why not? Because I don't like drinking unless I'm planning to get drunk. Okay. I'm so sorry. No, it's you're okay. to get drunk at lunchtime. For the sake of this, I thought I would, but um, <laughs> defeats the point of yeah. the video if I didn't. But I'm not, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really. A, I'm, I don't like. A, I'm not a one or two pint person. I'm like. A, I'm drinking. I'm going out tonight. And I find pubs as more of a hang out with your mates, have one, and then go home. I but, used to be like you. I think yeah. in my youth, and now I've got older. I like my ideal now. I don't want to be drinking late at night. Okay. I'll be tired the next day, I'll be dehydrated, I feel, if I have a hangover it last like two days now, older. My ideal for me is a few afternoon drinks, like a Sunday afternoon, and then you're sort of sobered up by the time you go to bed. That's probably smart. Like, there's it's no really real smart. difference, because I'd start my drinking at like 6 or 7pm, yeah. and then get home at 4am. Yeah. But if I started at midday and got home at 10pm, I'm still having the same experience, it's just the dancing in a nightclub. But I'd probably prefer a bar to a club. Yeah. Live music as well. I'd, I'd much rather that. Yeah. But again, like music, yeah. I'm a really uncomfortable. Like, I feel really uncomfortable within myself in social situations. So like, I don't show it. I'm, I'm quite yeah out there. But like things like live music, dancing in clubs, I need to be drunk. I just can't. Oh, yeah. I can't. I can't oh, yeah, like, I'm gonna dance sober. That's mental. Yeah. But even live that's music, like, I find watching live music one of the most uncomfortable things to experience if I'm not drunk. Even though I love it, I can really appreciate. It, but I'm just stood there like that. When I was at UEA, I was a student, I went to gigs all the time and I was and I never drank at them. And really? I don't know why. I wish I could do that. Like I, cause I, I love music, I appreciate music so much. I couldn't genuinely don't think I could live without music. I listen to yeah. it so often. But there's just something about being at a live show that I just need to loosen up a little bit because I feel like I don't know, my brain can't help to feel like I'm being judged constantly. Yeah. Like I put on an Instagram story a while back that I went to go shopping in the middle of Norwich and I'm always like, I get really anxious that people are watching me. Not because I think they know who I am, yeah. but I have this weird thing in my brain that people might look at me looking at a t-shirt and go, oh, that wouldn't suit him. And my brain can't get away from that. It's really weird. Like, yeah. I feel like everyone around me judges me, even though they're clearly not. No, but I know what you mean. I do... When you do something in the public eye, you do get a sort of feeling that people are... Yeah, but I, I just think of strangers. Like, anyone could just yeah. look at me and go, why is he wearing that? Well, like, like my hair used to be such a bad thing. Like, now my brain's going a bit weird because I'm getting this weird little boy band thing that's happening at the moment. It's looking good, your hair. But, like, I'm, I'm training it right now to grow a little bit like yours, I think. I did, I did an AI generator, and for some reason it kept giving me your hair. Oh. <laughs> Genuinely, I'll show you after this video. Yeah, it just brilliant. kept giving me your hair, and I was going, Did you do good? I think I could rock that. Yeah, you could. So I'm gonna, I'll show you afterwards. So, but naturally, I'm brushing my hair backwards, and it just falls into like this curtains thing. Yeah. So I'm going for like the boy zone look, and then. Yeah, you got a bit of um, Adam Carter, about the. Don't know who that is, do you? No. What's he from? <laughs> 
Uh, it's from the 90s. I, I, I'm picturing... Exactly. Adam Card, was that his name? Yeah. Can you remember A1? She, she asked Can you remember A1? Yeah, I remember A1, yeah. Wanna, here I I'm just going to Google Adam Card. The main guy from that ad there. So, anyone in the comments who has abused my hair at this point, feel bad. It's just, it's, I don't want to use product in it as no well. One's, no one's... He's, he's not called Adam Carter. Oh. <laughs> Aaron? Aaron Carter, I know that name. Who's, is that who I'm thinking? He's the blonde one. Yeah, this is what I mean. Aaron Carter. I think he was a teen pop really singer. recently. He died, yeah, he did, he died about two weeks ago. I didn't know that. Yeah, I saw it being posted a lot. How did he die? I think he was troubled. Oh. Not, not, not a nice end to that story. He was the guy from the Backstreet Boys' brother. Yeah. No. There we go. Well, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's, really, that's your hair inspiration. Oh, thank you. Well, it's just because I had the, had a, I had the transplant, so I'm like, I'm happy with like the line of it and stuff, but I really don't want to put product in it. So like, why not? I just worry that like I ruined it so much before because I used to use the sides of my hair to like hide my hairline, so I'd make it rock hard with hairspray. So as soon as I leave the house, it'll just be in place. So if you look some at some of my old photos, I've got this massive quiff, and it's purely because I'm hiding my hairline. And now that I don't need to do that, I still want to be able to quiff my hair, but I can't do that without product. So yeah. now part of my brain's going, well, if I don't want to use product, just grow my hair. I don't think I'm very good at product. I never know you what don't product. need it. You've no, got... but I never know what product to use. Like, I, I tell you what, I, all I use generally is a sea salt spray. Well, I've run out of sea salt spray. I love good. that, though. That's, I love sea salt spray. That's a good go-to. Um, at the minute, I've got some random, I think it's got like some surfer wax or something like that. Yeah, it's called, that's probably perfect for your type working. of hair. Yeah, but then it, sometimes my hair's back like this, sometimes it just falls down. I don't know, maybe I think I need a bit more hold. Yeah? How'd you learn about product? I I went through so many different hair products when I was at uni and stuff. Yeah. Like I, I only ever use like the same I think I use like a I don't think it's VO5. I can't remember who I use, but I had this like big yellow hairspray can as well, got to be. I use that loads at um, uni because it smells nice as well. And a lot of hairspray stink, don't they? So yeah. this one smells quite nice. But then I got into this thing of realizing if it rains on hairsprayed hair, it is the worst feeling. Like it goes rock hard, and you oh. get all this white stuff in your hair I don't as want well. That. No, so don't use hairspray. You don't uh, your length. But as I said, I was only doing it to keep my hair in like this rock solid place. So Were you quite paranoid about your hair? Because oh, I never awful. noticed it. Yeah, really bad. If you. Um, if you go back and look at like my old photos, you'll see like I always had this really big swoosh on the side of my like I didn't yeah. let my hair back and sides get really short. Yeah. Or if I did, they'd only cut to there, and then all of this top bit would drag into the front yeah. to hide how far back it went. So yeah, well, yeah it was pretty bad. Like it wasn't. We did a good job of hiding it, or, or I don't know. I never noticed it. Any, yeah. At no point would I ever said Steve is losing his hair. Yeah, there were a few comments on like YouTube and stuff, as you can expect. They'll yeah. comment on stuff that's people moaned at our facial hair on Reddit not too long ago. So well, yeah, mine. <laughs> all of us. They just said like all three of us. What like I've just got a normal beard. You've just got a normal moustache and Jack growing his. Yeah. So it's yeah. I don't see the issue with that. Like Jack's is fine. Ours, we're, we're all. Don't moan at anything, don't they? Yeah. So yeah, I'd get those kind of comments, and then, it, but then it, you you get comments about everything. Obviously, I, I I very rarely look at YouTube comments anymore. I, I don't know the last time I've gone through a happy hour video and even paid attention to it. Yeah, I don't. I, my, I mean, everyone's kind of nice to me generally. I'm very inoffensive. <laughs> And not just nice to you. You're like a god in their eyes. <laughs> I, I, I would. <laughs> every time I, I do Reddit streams, and every single time I go through, I'll find at least one minimum one comment of someone like yeah. falling head over heels. To be fair, to if I'm having a bit of a bad day, I'll go through the Happy Hour Reddit, <laughs> and it is basically the biggest boost ever. It's like going, oh. um, Robbie's like Jesus, and someone's going, oh, that's out of order, mate. He's much better than Jesus. It's <laughs> 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 big thing going through, and then everyone, and then. And then some bloke, and it's really got to my, I've really blown my ego up, like, because before I was quite chilled out, but now I'm like, I'm the best. And I look, because you go through, then suddenly someone will go, I like Robbie, but I don't think he's Jesus. And I'll be like, throw the table up, and go, what's his <laughs> dick? What's he up to? Bad him, bad him. What's his well, loser? Reddit's not too bad for me. I, I, I don't get many negative yeah. comments, but it always seems to be the negative comments that I do get are things that I can't do anything about. Like, someone moaned about my laugh. <laughs> it's my laugh, I can't do anything. Someone moaned no, about my right. accent. Your accent? Well, they said, I think I said it on happy hour, but they yeah. said um, that I don't say ing properly. So if I'm saying what's happening, I just say what's happening. It's just coming from Norwich. Norwich Street, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm Norwich. Street, That's Norwich. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm, I, I like the Reddit now. 
Jack still has a bit of a love hate relationship with it, I think. Yeah. But I think it's got it's a really good community, and I think we're lucky to have such a strong community on Reddit. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, I do like it. I do check it semi regularly, yeah, I'm quite regularly. Um, like lurk in it like a predator. <laughs> just to read those comments. Yeah. They're all going, oh, he's a god, yeah. and you're just there going, yes, I am. Got a bookmark to my favourite compliments. Yeah. How are you feeling about the 12 pods of Christmas? So this happy hour out in 12 things. Yeah, I mean, I've not been involved in that many of them, so I don't really, I'll be enjoying listening to them. I was trying to think of which episode you were on. That you've been in Danny week, D. You were on Danny D. Ben Pie Face? Johnson, Pie Face. Oh, so you've been on the ones that have gone out? Yeah, but then later on there's a real glut. Not a glut, that's the opposite. Yeah. It's a rout of me. There's, there's three episodes going out that I'm not on either. Oh. Alfie's taken my place. No, I, I just couldn't. For I, just, I just couldn't go. But um, I'm looking forward to listening to those ones because I like the guests. It's really hard to talk about something where we're aware of it. But it's like when we knew about the tour. Oh my god, it was so hard. Like people would be like, "Oh, you have guys ever going to go on tour?" Yeah. And I'd just be like, "Maybe." I start being a little bit mysterious. Can maybe soon. <laughs> <laughs> like I do. Uh, yeah, I never know what to say, so I'm always a bit like, "Oh." Yeah, and then like every time I'm streaming at the moment, people will be like, oh, so who's the next guest? And then I'll have to look at the list and go, okay, has this one been announced yet? Like at, at the time that we're doing this, tomorrow's episode is Lee Gill, the actor. Yeah. Um, but that's already been announced because he was meant to come on. Yeah. We filmed that over a month ago. So, but then I'm looking at other ones going, no, can't say that one, can't say that one, yeah. can't say that one. I just say it's about my pay credit, I don't know the answer to anything with uh, anyone asked me anything. I'll just go, most likely it's about football, so I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, that was my people. Well, Stevie, it's been delightful coming by. Here's a pint with. My pint is the timer. Okay, I, I didn't know this in advance. You're all made up. I would have drank You can still drink it. We can hang out for another pint, but that is the end of the recorded pint. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you very much for joining for a drink. Have a very Merry Christmas. Have a nice Merry Christmas nice to time. you. And yeah, there we go. I believe. You believe indeed. Cheers for watching. Have another one soon.